a winter bikepacking challenge. Our mission is simple, to head out into the hills to have a mini epic adventure. There are two rules, okay? No cars and no discomfort. How are you gonna do it? With these. Don't wanna get my feet wet. Pajamas, don't normally wear those, but you know, why not? I'm looking forward to some badass black bean chili. Ew! <laughs> I'm so intrigued to know what happens on this. It is a turn Orox, a cargo bike with a difference. Now, frankly, it's the answer to my prayers, but more on that later. Now, it's not that we don't like cars here at GCN, is it? We do, but what we love is having the option to leave them at home and do more on bikes. Yeah, let's be honest, being stuck in traffic absolutely sucks, and then riding bikes is fun. Yeah, and that's what cargo bikes mean to most people who have them, is the ability to leave your car at home more. And whilst this bike too can replace your car, the car that it's replacing is a four by four. Yeah, SUVs can go and do one. This is an SUV. Yep, and all the better for it. I think this is right on the limit of what a bicycle is, and I love it for it. So including the rider, it can carry 210 kilos, either luggage or passengers. It's got a Bosch Performance CX line motor down there, powered by two on this by 800 watt hour batteries to give it a range of up to 300 kilometers. Frankly, Hank, I don't think there's anything that can stop this bike. Not unless you're riding across the country. There isn't. Fortunately, our sights are slightly more modest on this February morning. We're in the north of England, starting in the city of Sheffield, the outdoor capital of the country, sitting as it does next to the Peak District National Park. Our ride takes us straight out of town and up into the hills, including the steepest road in the world, before heading up and over one last ridge to our camp spot in Edale. And then back, hopefully. Will we have enough juice in the batteries? We'll find out. No car, sorted. sorted. No discomfort. What's that all about? Well, we're going to check out the rule book today, mm. aren't we? Stuff minimalist, miserablest bike packing. This is going to be a cycling trip in comfort, dare I say it, style, Hank, as yeah. well. Even in the depths of a British winter. I mean, I, was, I paused because actually it's not that bad today, yeah. is it? There is too much talk about suffering and hardship and going without when it comes to bikepacking. That's right. Cycle touring is closer to the mark, isn't mm. it? You can take more stuff. But what about that level of comfort that you get from camping with your car? Yeah, think about it. Thick mattress, spare food, oh. uh, well, spare clothes as well, yeah. and shoes, and then your pillow. Oh, and tables and chairs? You brought a table and chairs? Yeah, if you look closely behind your fat duffel bag, the one that you look like you've been on gap year, circa 1980. Two duffel bags. <laughs> yes. The reason being, we have got, I think, close to 500 litres right? of storage capacity between these two bikes. That's the same as like a family car. It's more than a Range Rover Sport. Wowzers. Yeah. So, That's uh, crazy. It's the first time I've ever gone um, bike packing oh, with a watermelon as well. Figured that's for you. Yeah, thanks, mate. I've got you some, um, some wood. Some firewood. Some firewood. You never know when you're going to be, you know, especially the British weather. Come on, then. Let's see if it fits. You know it's good when you don't even have to, like, worry about folding your clothes. Pajamas? Don't normally wear those, but, you know, why not? That's, that's melon hair. That's Connor. <laughs> Electric toothbrush? No, I am Bear Grylls, but sometimes you just need to take the shortcuts, so fire light as it is. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to need all of them, but I've got the space, so why not? Oh, there's a baguette somewhere as well. Do you want to take the kettle? Yeah, we might as well, mate. I've got more pots and pans here than got my kitchen. I've got some as well, mate. <laughs> I've got a full set, yeah. I'm slightly concerned, mate. That tent looks quite small. <laughs> Given the size of everything else, it looks like we've got the smallest I, tent on the planet. Oh, you've got two tents, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Am I 
already. <laughs> I mean, I've literally got the table and chairs. <laughs> We're literally ready for anything, including hills. Come on. A little on. bit rear heavy, though. Ever set off with quite such a big grin on my face. These bikes are unbelievable. Now we're not dissing bike packing, of course we're not. We absolutely love it as well. But this is an incredible option where instead of having a table and chairs with you and literally almost the kitchen sink, you could have a couple of kids on the back and still have stacks of room. I'm slightly concerned Hank doesn't know how wide his bike is. <laughs> He's nearly taken out a couple of parked cars with his table. There you go, here we go. It's just, I just don't want to get my feet wet. Do you think Bear Grylls would have that attitude, mate? I don't want to get my feet wet. I've never heard him say that. No, it's funny that. Normally he's just like, oh, give me another cockroach to suck yeah, on. Yeah, but then he stays in a hotel. Didn't hear that from me. After, what, two miles of cruising through parks, we're pretty much out of the city now, aren't we? Yeah, heading into the peak district, but less people around here, so I'm feeling it's gonna get a little bit more rugged. Moving on, embracing destiny. Carry on, despite all my past, into tomorrow's bright and shiny days. So winter's kicked in, hasn't it, mate? It really has. Out of Sheffield and we're proper out in the wilderness now. <laughs> Sheffield's lying behind us in the sunshine and we're in the gale. There's been some quite steep, ri steep riding up to there. Yeah, it's got quite gnarly. Surprising me, actually. You cold, though? Not anymore. <laughs> That looks like a hell of a jacket. It is. Wrapped up there, boy. It's like you've got your seatbelt, mate. It's a dragon on the floor. Uh. We're properly on the moors now, just outside of Sheffield. This wind, like, I'm plumbly glad I got a massive motor, mate. I don't know about you. Oh gosh, mate. Sitting in tour mode at the moment. And it's been climbing all the way out of Sheffield. And now literally we're on top of the moors, isn't it? You're, you're, you're in tour views. mode, did you say? Yeah. Okay, I'm in off. I, I've no, had it you're off. Not. Yeah, no, it's not even on, mate. I'll be checking, checking your battery at the end, don't you worry about that. <laughs> oh, no, this is cool, but do you know what's coming next, mate? The world famous Stanage Edge. Oh, say what? It's quite hard riding one handed on this stuff. <laughs> Danny McCaskill, eat your heart out! <laughs> One handed, trials riding. Wow! Yes, mate, that's the view we came for. So that there is Stanage Edge, and it's basically from there, it's just Peak District. And our campsite. Is gonna be over like next hill, basically. It's beautiful. It's mega, isn't it? Yeah. Exposed, but beautiful. Yeah. Not a huge amount up here. I mean, I think that's the like, idea. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I think it's cool, man. It is, isn't it? Right. Go on, Down the hill. It. Yeah. Off you go, mate. Don't lose your pineapple while we're watching. <laughs> oh, shh. Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
lunchtime. Oh, beautiful. What a spot. No wonder this thing's heavy. I got three <laughs> litres of water. No, four, four litres. Yeah, four need, kilos just we, in water. We need it for cooking. Have you got any um, avocado guac? I do have guac, yeah. yeah. Flapjacks, pudding. God, I suddenly realise how hungry I am. They're good tortilla chips, mm. though, aren't they? Like, proper good. Do you know what? There's something really nice about not sitting on a floor. You know? Mm. That was a very nice lunch, actually. Yeah, delicious. Thank you so much for buying it all. Oh, it's my pleasure, mate. How are the gluten-free buns? Not bad, as far as gluten-free rolls go. Yeah. Um, the slight problem now, having had a massive feed, yeah. is uh, the next bit of bicycling is the world's steepest climb, Yeah. supposedly. You've done it before, haven't you? I have, yeah. Can, you think you can get up it? Yeah, no problem. Really? Mm. You're going to have to sit a long way forward, I think. Yeah, but I've got turbo mode. Well, I feel like... You're not going to go over backwards? No, I reckon I'll be all right. I mean, it is bloody steep. Some say Olive Bridge didn't even make it up. Well, I mean, he didn't make it up, did he? Another one for the uh, Oliver Bridgewood reel of shame. Too many leaves, <coughs> it's wet. My rear wheel is just slipping, I can't get traction. Well, I've got an Olive Bridgewood on the back of my bike. I've got 100 kilos, pretty much. <laughs> no, you haven't. No, you have. <laughs> That. Mmm. Oh, it's like treacle. Cool. Whilst Hank is taking this opportunity to cut up one of his watermelons, I thought I would take a minute to talk you through this bike. As mentioned, it is a turn, okay? They also make the legendary GSD cargo bike. I say legendary, I bought one. There's also stacks in my local area. It is the only, as far as I can tell, truly compact cargo bike. It's easy to store, but yet you can still fit two kids on the back plus a week's worth of shopping. Now, you could easily fit two kids on the back of this one and an epic amount of storage as well, but compact, it is definitely not. In fact, it's a complete departure from anything Turn have ever done before. Urban, compact, sleek is their kind of USP, but actually I can't find anything like this on the market full stop. So I was really intrigued to know why they've done it. So I asked. The head of design, it turns out, lives in Finland, and he simply proposed that they make a cargo bike that can go everywhere a GSD couldn't. So away from tarmac, into dirt, into mud, and snow, whatever you end up with in Finland. So no market research, no focus groups, just a bike that they wanted. And so here it is, a go anywhere, carry anything cargo bike. Now, some of the details, again, as I said, it's got a Bosch CX performance line motor in there. It can kick out 85 Newton meters of torque. We will see if that's enough to get us up the world's steepest climb. But then I've got these two big 800 watt hour batteries in here, one of which is in this insulated frame compartment here. Hank's bike, meanwhile, only has one 800 watt hour battery. So he might not be able to make it back to Sheffield tomorrow, so I'll give him a tow. The reason for it is his bike is actually the lower spec model. He's got a 12-speed XT mountain bike drivetrain on there, whereas I, if you look closely, have got a Gates carbon belt drive on here linked up to a 14-speed Rollhoff hub gear. For many people, that is the ultimate low-maintenance drivetrain option. We've got a few optional extras on here as well. So I've got the Clubhouse. So this is what you would have if you're carrying passengers on there as well, but also makes the perfect place to keep my duffel bag. Um, and then that front rack as well is not standard. You can carry up to 25 kilos on that one. The last thing I'm gonna draw your attention to now before Hang eats all of his watermelon, um, is another part of this Bosch system here. We've got the Kiox head units on there. I know everyone worries with expensive e-bikes about theft. That has got a built-in alarm, so you can pair it up to your smartphone, and also like an immobiliser, so that the motor won't work unless you tell it to, basically, with your phone or the head unit there, which I think is a nice touch. How are you getting on, mate? Nice? Yeah, really good, actually. Cool, man. I'll, go and, I'll grab a chair. Hang on a Grab sec. a chair and your pineapple, because I've done the watermelon. I'm going to save the pineapple for later. Um, but yeah, otherwise, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. What do you fancy, big bit or small bit? To be honest with you, 
I actually hate so. watermelon. Is that all right, that bit? Yeah, that's, that's good. Is it? Mm. What's he doing over there? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not falling on the road or anything. <laughs> to the world's steepest climb? Absolutely. I think it's that way, isn't it? It is that way, mate, yeah. Good after you, my man. I feel kind of naked without the baguette. Can we, like, draw a face on your pineapple? <laughs> like Wilson in Castaway. 35%, Hank. Yeah, some would say the world's steepest climb. Some might say that. I'm not mm. entirely sure they're right, but it is nevertheless pretty darn steep. Yeah. I'm in turbo mode, clearly. Uh, there's too. also a power meter on this uh, Bosch head unit, which is uh, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I'll be interested to see how much power you're going to put down, as well as your turbo motor, but we've got some weight on the back, so I well, worry yeah. that we're going to just end up wheeling the whole way up, but we'll find out. The bike's 33 kilos. I reckon I've got another 30-odd kilos at the back. And a pineapple. And a... Well, that's probably another four. Yeah, exactly, it? yeah. Right, OK, should we do it? Come on, Ed. Okay. Come on, Ed. Come on, Ed. Oh! Jesus, I'm oh, bloody, bloody off-road. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh. oh, that is quite steep, isn't it, up there? Is that the road? <sighs> yeah. I'm only doing 250 watts. <laughs> this is ridiculous. 360 watts. I think I'm nearly at the limit. <laughs> well, apart from me and Hank embarrassingly crashing into each other in the middle of the climb, yeah, I'd, I'd say we made, we made that. I mean, I've got to say, it's an impressive amount of weight we've got on this bike to get up there. Perfect. Imagine trying to do that without the motor, though. Well, I couldn't. You I would... literally couldn't push the bike. No. I had to have walk mode on. Yeah, nice. Right, that way. To the campsite. To the campsite. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> go for it, mate. Right up. There you go, on top of the gear. Here we go. Woo! Off we go! Oh. Draffin' in! Oh, he's going! Yeah, fair play, he's done it. Nailed it. 
what do you reckon, bud? Here we are, mate. It's not a flat, but I think it'll do. Then let's just stick the poles in and go from there, I reckon. Yeah. Get some shape on it. This is a purple one, please. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> What did she do, man? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> just sit on it. <laughs> I just need some tape to go, ah. It's like watching a surgeon at work, isn't it? <laughs> just that little bit too thin. God, it really did split. Mm. Put in it. Well, it was a rough ride, wasn't it, today? Yeah. Not for us, but you know, for some of the things in our panniers. I found the first casualty that... <laughs> uh, that mushroom's looking a bit sorry for itself, isn't it? It's a quality knife, that. No messing around. How's that water looking, mate? Do you reckon we've nearly got a boil on? Do you want uh, wine lessons with Simon? Yeah, go on, sell it to me. Well, so my theory about wine, okay, is it's as much about what's in the bottle as what you think is in the bottle, okay? And so, you know how wine always tastes really good when you're on holiday? Mm. So, it's not because the wine's really good, it's because no. you're on holiday. Yeah. So my thing now is that if I buy wine from somewhere that I've been and yeah. a good experience at, i.e. Mont Ventoux, it's yeah. going to taste flipping amazing, no matter what. So okay. it's like, when I drink this wine, I'm literally thinking of, of Mont Ventoux. bicycling up Mont Ventoux and then having a really nice dinner after Yeah. To luxury bike camping. Absolutely, my Glam friend. Hang on a minute, so it's glamping. Bike glamping? Let's call it bike call glamping. We bike can work glamping. with that. I think for me, mate, rather than go somewhere like epic, yeah. which I would love to do, who think that's been most excited? would be the thought of like, you know, doing this with the family along as well. I like, literally sticking the kids on the back. Why well, you could? I like you totally could. Hundred percent. Because what we had on today was was similar to your two kids. Yeah. Weight wise. But you could have even more on. Like you might not. <laughs> I don't think we take them, take them that road and quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> would you still take a table? Oh, yeah, absolutely, mate. I wouldn't go anywhere without a table. wouldn't go anywhere without a table. I mean, it does This feel... is a necessity. Chairs. It's winning at life, isn't it? I mean, that is... Do you know what I mean? Sitting there, grim. Up here, I feel like royalty. Yeah, basically. Oh, you're in your proper place. You're quite impressed that I got all this for. Yeah. I am. That's not bad, is it? Well impressed. <laughs> Hi, buddy. <laughs> bit, bit windy last night, was it? Yeah, I was slightly worried my bike was going to fall on the tent. But it didn't, right? No. Oh, you're going to get blown away. Ooh. Where was the jet engine? <laughs> it was right outside our tent last night. As you can tell, it's raining this morning, because uh, it's February. It's also blowing an absolute gale, which was the only, the only slight issue last night. I don't think there's any money in the world or luxuries that could have uh, prevented the wind from keeping us awake last night. So, uh, mission accomplished, I think. I was warm, I was snuggly, toasty. Could have had a bigger tent, couldn't we? Yeah, but it was cozy. It was. Oh, we camped out in February. It was very nice, really. Do 
turbo mode! Very wet, but nice morning. Classic British winter bike packing weather this is. Classic. This place is pretty gnarly, right? So this is Mam Tor, or that is Mam Tor. And that used to be the main road. No. Like, like literally the main road. What? Yeah, and I think they stopped fixing it in like the 70s or something because it just constantly slid down the mountain. And that's what's left of it. That is wild. Yeah, isn't it cool? Proper landslide. You can ride it. Really? Yeah. Is it safe? Who cares? Yeah, Let's ride know. it. Yeah, come on, mate. <laughs> Look at that. Nice warm breakfast awaits. Ice cream for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? Just what I needed, actually. Yeah. A good cup of coffee and a full English breakfast. Like, we should probably stress, we could have cooked breakfast. I brought the porridge, you got the mocha pot, we had the coffee. Well, that's true, just, the weather wasn't great. <laughs> I mean, we had chair, table chairs, etc., etc., but we could have done with a slightly bigger tent. Made it, Sheffield lies just three miles that way. I've still got, well, I had 25% battery, but I've lost 2% doing donuts around the car park. I mean, that was a lot of fun there. Yeah. Not many bikes you can do that on. Not really, but seriously, yeah. that's cool. Mission objective number one, no car. Complete. Totally nailed that. Yeah. Number two, discomfort. Hank, have you suffered at all over the last 36 hours? Little bit. I would have loved to have bought a bigger tent. I think, you know, braving the elements while we were cooking. Also, you added way too much chilli, so my mouth feels a little sore still. Yeah, the chipotle paste. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, mate. And, um, uh, and probably a chamois, but I didn't do that because you well, told me not Well, all three to things were effectively self-inflicted. The tent, I mean, you made me carry it anyway. I had capacity for a bigger tent. Yeah. And yeah, my only, literally my only discomfort was being a bit stiff getting dressed this morning. Yeah, like stand bent up. over, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but otherwise, I've been warm, I've been dry. 100%. And I've had a massive grin on my face. One other point to mention, I said at the start that this bike was kind of like the answer to my prayers. The reason being, in a previous video where I talked about all the things that I'd learned about e-cargo bikes in a year of owning one, I did say at the end that the one thing I wished was that my GSD looked a little bit more Mad Max. It was like turn were listening. Yeah, exactly. Basically, this is about as Mad the Max as it gets, short of you sat on the back with a, with shotgun. a shotgun. I mean, that would have just nailed it, I think. Yeah, I think we might have got into a bit of trouble yeah. leaving Sheffield if you were sat on the back with a shotgun. And on that note, 
I think we're going to wrap up this epic adventure. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you thought. And if you would do an adventure with a smile on your face in the February winter weather in the UK. Well, where would you take a bike like this? That yeah. is the question. Um, huge thanks to Turn for lending us yeah. two of these Aurochs bikes, which um, I think they're going to have to wrestle them I to know. get to wrestle us to get them back off us, basically, yeah, aren't they? So uh, I, I would be the king of the school run on this. You would be. Should we do a few more donuts and then uh, then go home and then ride to Sheffield? Yeah, come. <laughs> Feel <Phil> spin. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've been practicing for my still whole wait. life. Your pineapple's still there. Right home we go. Enough faffing around, you little kid. You're like a pig in <laughs> Woo!